beautiful pass to Harms, and he puts it in. Matt's the type of guy that can bring some energy to some things in the game of basketball to lift his team up. You know, you just simply can't have enough of them. Coaches are always looking for those guys that have that kind of energy, and it's authentic. I think Matt, he struggled in our first couple of games this season, uh, and, and I could tell he just wasn't showing that emotion. He had a lot of, you know, kind of hype around him at the beginning of the season, and obviously him struggling probably put him down a little bit. It was kind of a reality check when he when he got benched. A lineup change for Purdue. Evan Boudreaux in, and they'll try to bring the energy of Matt Harms off the bench like last year. I sat down and talked with him that it'd be best to come off the bench. And I think it's a process for guys, even though he played last year and he played 18 minutes a game. The discussion me and Coach Payne had when I moved to come off the bench in that six-man role again was that I wasn't settling into games the right way. You can still be, you know, yourself. You don't have to be Caleb Swanigan or Isaac Haas, like being the best version of Matt Harms. I feel like going to the bench around midpoint of the season, I think really, really helped me in just kind of changing my perspective on that. So it's just fulfilling your role in the time you get instead of just being so focused on that starting point. I'm just being like, oh, I'm the guy starting. Because all that really means is that you're going to be doing the jump ball. And I feel like it took me a while to like really figure that out. But I feel like right now, I've picked it up a lot more just being locked in just from that first minute. And I think that was, that was you know, mostly on me. Indiana-Purdue is the ultimate rivalry. It just goes beyond whatever sport we're playing. And there's just a couple of rivalries that mean, like UNC-Duke is another one, that just mean just a little extra. And it just always feels amazing to win there. I think it's pretty well known that the student section was saying some things. And, um, you know, you can agree with it or not, that they, the fact that they were saying it, but they were. It was karma in that game. Like, they got into it and the things they said. We always preach about it, you know, win the game. Don't get caught up into what's going on. We can still do our job. We can still win the game. Things go against you. You get a technical foul against you that you shouldn't have gotten. We got a technical foul called. The fans are chanting things they shouldn't be chanting. A lot of guys would retaliate, would be mad at the official, be mad at their fans, and you got to keep your focus. And uh, I thought Matt hung in there and kept his focus and made a huge play for us there at the end. Purdue down with the ball, Carson misses, and it's tipped in by Hart. I guess could call that poetic justice. I think the most hated player, you know, outside their home arena is Matt Harms. Well, the villain role is you just kind of take all the hate. People hate Matt Harms. Every team has a guy like me. If a certain team comes in and you're like, oh, I hate that guy. I hate the way he plays. I hate the way he does this. I hate the way he does that. Matt's awesome. He's a very emotional player. I think that's why a lot of people don't like him. Maybe his hair is it, too. He's always fucking his hair around. People hate the hair. People love the hair here, but as soon as you know, step outside of West Lafayette, people hate it. If they don't know my name, oh, I just hate the guy with the hair. He's always celebrating. I think that's one thing. I think that's the biggest thing why fans hate him. Probably hate like another guy on another team that does the exact same things I do because there's there's a lot of them. You want to win the game, and if there's a guy, you know, beating you, and he's doing that just to get his own team going, and he's just, I would that would boil my blood. Obviously, showing that emotion on someone else's home floor is something that a lot of people don't like. I think Matt is the guy that that feeds off the emotion, feeds off the energy. Edwards, 28-27 Boilermakers. 
Left wing Klein for three. Missed it. Follow by Harms is good. Here comes the Mackey faithful. This is where you start to hear the noise. Dosumo going the other way for the floater. Nice. Put it up and down. The Illini lead at the half by one. Well, you knew that they're going to come out with some haymakers here early. Klein dribbles down the sideline left. A three. Yes! Matt Harms, a triple! He's yet to miss a shot in this game. Here comes Illinois, and there's a block by Harms. Wow. A long pass to Grady. Lays up and in! Oh, my! Oh, my! Harms has been a force tonight. Wow. Career high points, career high rebounds, and he just tied his career high with five blocks. For the basketball novice, Ralph, is that a good day when you set a career high in scoring, rebounding, and block shots? And you're perfect from the field? <laughs> it's a career day for some folks. <laughs> Boilermakers inbound the ball in the backcourt with a 10-point lead. What a game Matt Harms has played. <laughs> what an effort. What an effort tonight. We just got to keep that focus. Obviously, we got a big one Saturday against Ohio State. And keep defending. Some things might not go your way. Have some turnovers. Have some misses. Things like that. You just keep defending and keep setting your defense. All right, great job. Let's go second and third. Matt Harms run. Uh, pretty much sealed the ball game for them. You know, Harms was terrific, not only offensively, uh, but defensively. And uh, 21 and 10 was a little much. Welcome to the Big Ten. A lot of good players, a lot of good coaches.